Not me just... (laughs) Not me just putting my ear up to the microphone to see if I can hear something. (laughs) I'm dead. That was too much. Happy Thirsty Thursday. Welcome back, winers. It's a solo wine. And it's crazy. First of all, what I just did was crazy. But second of all, the other thing that's crazy is... That I put off these solo episodes so much, like to the point of like, I I I I just don't know, like imposter syndrome. I'm bored of myself. Who wants to hear me talking about myself? What the hell am I even gonna say? Like I just get more creative thoughts when I um, know that I have a guest coming on, or I get more excited, more jazzed about it. I guess. But then here I am, like camera on mic on pod recorder on and I'm just like ready to do the damn thing I just feel good about it I've got my wine now last solo episode I was hammered off of um you know it was like an emotional drunk state that I was in like an emotional wreck that's what you call it (laughs) what do you call when you're drunk with not even drinking an emotional wreck um But no, we're feeling much better. And thanks for all the feedback on that episode and the love and the calls and the text messages and the likes um, on the episode and all that. I appreciate it. It was a tough moment, but your girl got through it with the help of y'all whiners. So thank you so much. Um, So yeah, pushing the solo episode to the last second. This is the Monday before the Thursday that it comes out and like... Yeah, typically I don't like to do this in case something goes wrong with the recording or the this or that. And like, we're just, we're doing it because I got a packed week. I'm doing a couple fun things this week. So I guess by the time this is over, I would have already done it. Um, But I'm doing my first live with another content creator Wednesday. So that'll be exciting. I've never, I've actually never even done a live at all. So I'll have to tell you about that next time. We do a podcast next time I do a solo. And then that's another reason, too, is, like, I think about, like, what have I done? What do people want to hear? What do they care about? What have I done that's interesting? Um, And then I thought, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your girl jumped out of a plane again. I went skydiving again. Nah, it was amazing. Oh, my God, it was so good. I just want to do it all the time. I went for the second time. So when I, okay, backtrack. When I went for the first time, I loved it, of course. And then they offer you like a cheaper second flight. If you buy it the day of the first jump, you get your second flight for like way cheap. So I bought that back like two years ago at this point. Um, And then me and my friend Kiana saw my podcast or my, (laughs) everything's fine. I'm fine. She saw my skydive video back when I did it and she's like oh my god I want to go I want to go so we ended up making plans to go together and then I think I told you about this when it happened originally we like went did it we went up in the plane the weather was kind of questionable but they were like okay like we think we're good so we went up in the plane and then they were like no weather's not good land so that was so bizarre and I wasn't like that freaked out but I can imagine for somebody's first time not kosher you know what I mean not what we want to be doing and like again we appreciate that the pilot is like no not good weather let's go like certainly don't want to jump out of a plane if it's not ideal to do so so uh, we were not like pushing for it to happen but it's just like adrenaline 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 and then it's like no 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 um what was so crazy about that too is like the guy that was attached to my back was freaking out and I was like, um, is everything, is everything okay? Like while we're in the plane, he's attached to me. Um, and he's like, yeah, you know, like us skydivers, like we don't typically land in a plane. So we don't like to land in a plane because we jump out of planes. That's what we prefer to do. So he's like shaking and quaking back there. I had to hold his hand a little bit, give him a little nudge, a little wink, wink, a little, everything's going to be okay, honey. Um, so that was interesting. I had to be, I had to be the adult in the situation. I had to be the professional. No, it was fine. He was, he was, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but he was nervous about the landing in a plane. Anyway, so 
we've been trying to get it on the schedule to go again. And um, it took a lot of work. It took a lot of work because you don't want to go on another cloudy day. You want to go on a day that it's going to be good because you don't want to go through that again. So we eventually went and it was so amazing. So I got to do like, I guess, more advanced type things like when you originally jump out of the plane, they have you keep your hands on your little, um, um, I don't know, your equipment or your vest or whatever you want to call it, your buckles. And then this time they like had me, had, had my hands free. And then I actually did this thing where I was like, they call it, um, oh, what do they call it? Shoot. I forgot what they call it, but you're like diving, um, your face down when you jump out of the plane, like rather than the banana thing up um so I did that and then we got to like turn a bunch and it was just like a really cool different experience than the first time the first time I went skydiving was absolutely fucking phenomenal and that was so liberating and that was I needed I needed to prove that I could do it like I was in charge of my own body like no matter what happened no matter who said so no matter who tried to take my my body it was my body um and that's so that was like such a it was a life-changing moment for sure and then the second time I do feel like I was able to like have fun while I was up there like I was able to just like look around and I was just very aware of my surroundings and it was so cool because my friend Keanu and I were like up in the air together like she was so close to me we were like screaming like to each other like Get up it! Oh my God! it was so cool it was just like hanging out up in the sky what <laughs> it was I, I don't know skydiving is a very strange thing like who invented that why do we start jumping out of planes I mean I love it I'm so happy about it but what a concept you know what a concept anyway so loved it and I have credit to go again. <laughs> my sister Megan got me credit for my birthday last year to go again. And it's like, should I do the thing where you can jump on your own? So basically, you take a six-hour class. I mean, I don't think I'm, like, ever going to train to be a certified skydiver. That's, like, I think, like, 20-something jumps. It's a big ordeal. And I just, like, personally don't have the money for that and if I did have the money for that like it's going towards something else um but to go to jump on your own basically you go take like a six hour class then you you go up and rather than being attached to you the 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 trainer to your back they are basically they jump out with you and there's these like loops on your uniform like fabric can you imagine fabric or buckles or something and they put their hand through it. So they're jumping with you in that way. And then once you pull your parachute, they leave. They go on their own. And you're left with just a walkie-talkie. And so then they're directing you on your whole... I don't even know how long are you up there. Five minutes? Six, seven, eight minutes? They're directing you like, er, go to the left. Oh, no, come back more to the right. Okay, we're going to land soon. And I don't know, like just seems it seems excessive like you're really taking your life into your own hands there but like why not you know what I mean like why not just risk it all I'm a big like I've had a, a few experiences in my day as you guys know I'm a big uh if I'm gonna die then let it be like I never want to like uh, have I cheated death? I don't want to say that if I haven't. No, I don't. I don't think I've technically cheated death. But like, I don't want to cheat death. Like, if it's my time, I'd rather go. So like, why not get out of like do it out of a plane? You know. Like, if that's gonna be the way, I would never want to do it above water though, because drowning. That's not. I would want to cheat that. If I knew I was going to die drowning, I'd, like, never go near water again. <laughs> it's, just, it's just not how I want to go. Um, okay, enough about jumping in death. Um, oh, actually, speaking of 911, <laughs> I, a few, a few weeks ago, I'm still thinking about this person I called um, 911 for. So a while ago, I had to call the police department about something, and it was, like, 
quite ridiculous to get a hold of the police department on a non-emergency line. I don't know how to describe it, but they were just like, oh, like, they're, okay, uh, they're closed. So they, it was connected over here and, like, try this number, but they're closed. And, like, okay, well, and I was like, I'm just trying to get a hold of somebody. that was for, like, a left backpack. And I, I don't, long story short, there was a backpack sitting out by my house, like, on a side street by my house for days. And I was like, this could be linked to... Um, a kidnapping. Hello. Like what kid just left their backpack here and then went home and their parent wasn't like, where's your backpack? Did you leave it at school? Oh no, I left it at the bus stop. Do you know what I'm saying? Like something was weird about it. So I didn't, and I knew it wasn't an emergency. So I was the responsible person and I called the non-emergency. It took me, it took me like 45 minutes to get a hold of somebody. Anyway, so I was going to meet someone for an early morning walk one day. It was literally six in the morning and I ended up like not getting on the freeway. I went side streets and I didn't realize that it doesn't connect to the side street I needed, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going through all these houses and as I'm pulling up, you know, just talking to myself as I do, as any normal, very normal person does talk to themselves, I'm pulling up and as I'm pulling up to this like intersection I'm like saying out loud I'm like ugh, what a douche look how terrible he parked you know like you could tell that like this was a douche parking so then I was getting closer and then I realized oh they're not parked they must be because they're like they're so not in a parking spot at this person's house like they're like halfway in the intersection but halfway at the house maybe they are picking up their carpool colleague and they're just waiting for them in an awkward space. And as I got really, really close, I realized, oh, they're actually uh, passed out. They're not awake and they're on a car. It's not a parking. They're not waiting for their carpool colleague. They are, they have collided with a car and their lights are still on. The car is like running. But at that point, I'm like, passing them already and I'm approaching a railroad crossing and I just was like do I get do what do I do here like I just feel like in this climate it's kind of scary to like get out of your car and help someone if you're if I don't I don't know it's like when do you choose to when do you choose not to I'm not really sure like of course I would want to help someone in an emergency situation but like are you gonna be are you gonna wake up and be mad at me you're gonna wake up and shoot me you're gonna be like what is happening or maybe they were see that's the thing maybe they weren't even sleeping at all maybe they were dead that's the thing that I keep thinking I, I just can't stop thinking about this person um so anyway as I was like passing the railroad things I was like fuck I don't it was like a kind of narrow and very dark road because it was early in the morning and I was like okay I'm calling 911 I'm calling 911 so call 911 and um turns out it's just like you know they ask you questions and you just gotta know the answer <laughs> just I just didn't know you know like 911 what's your emergency like do you need what was it fire emergency or rescue or something and I'm like emergency (laughs) rescue not a fire yet you know and she's like okay what's the you know emergency and I was like okay I was just at this place this cross street you know, telling them where it was. And I was like, as I, I'm telling them the whole story. <laughs> I started telling the whole story and I didn't realize until I get to the walk with Carolyn. She's like, you didn't have to tell the whole story. You just say like, I saw a car collided with another car in front of a house. It seems that they're either, you know, passed out or injured because the car's still running and they're not alert and I was like right 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 because by the way I told them like hey I was driving up and I thought like what a douche parking job they did (laughs) I just want to give all the details you know what I mean so like you have all the information anyway I um, was on that walk and I thought I left my phone on loud because I thought that they might want to contact me for more information you know and um, then I missed the call and so now I just don't know what happened to that person i hope they were alive i hope everything's fine and then i'm like oh god like it was probably just a little doze off from a little drinky drinky which is so so bad i'm not saying just as in it's okay but i'm like maybe they would have just woken up and been on their way and i caused a big hullabaloo but if you think about it the car in the house that they were the car that they were like collided with like what if they woke up and drove off and then it was like a hit and run and they the person who owned the car didn't know who hit the car 
So I think I did the right thing. But anyway, I'm just like, I'm just worried, you know? I'm just really worried. Oh, and then two things, two ridiculous things almost happened to me. One did happen. One almost happened to me. But two people tried to quit me, if you can believe that or not. Two people tried to break up with me. And one succeeded. Leaving my therapist's office a few weeks ago. She's like weird, silently, like following me to the door, which she never does. And she like is like, oh, I'm going to walk out with you. I'm leaving. I'm like, well, this is awkward. I've never ridden the elevator with my therapist before. Like, our session's done. Now what am I supposed to do? Create small talk with her? Like, how was your weekend? <laughs> uh, any travel plans? What are, you, what are you up to? You know? <laughs> like, I don't know how to be a real human with her. Anyway, we get in the elevator, and she tells me um, she is um, – her last day is coming up. In, it was, like, two weeks from the day she told me, and I was like, uh, okay. And she's like, so I just, sorry, I just wanted to tell you outside of the office. And I'm like, are you quitting therapy? (laughs) What's going on here? She's like, no, no, no. Um, I, I'm, I'm, you know, getting a new office. Like if you want to come, if you want to still see me, you're more than welcome to like, that's totally fine. And I was like, okay, because you can't just like throw that out there like that. Like you can't just try to break up with your patient, like someone is in therapy because they need it. And I have anxiety attachment issues. You can't do that to somebody. Yes, I will be coming. I will be following you wherever you go. Okay. So anyway, that worked out. She didn't succeed. But then two days, three days later, I'm at my personal training session with my trainer who has been on the podcast before. I post about him all the time on social media, post about the gym that it used to be. And he is, we're, we're working out, we're doing our session, and he's, like, giving me this weird, very weird, it was, like, a very, like, endearing look, like, sad, but also hopeful or something. And I was, like, everything okay? You got something to, what did I do? What's going on? This is at the end of our session. He walks me out, and he tells me, I just want to let you know, this was our last session. Okay. And at this point, I'm just like, no offense to him, but I'm just thinking about me. Like, my therapist does this to me. My trainer does this to me. Like, those are two separate people. Obviously, I'm the common denominator here. What am I doing wrong to make two people try and quit me? Anyway, he succeeded because the gym shut down. And so now I'm out of a gym. (laughs) But it's like that gym meant kind of a lot to me. Like, and stupidly I was paying too much because I wasn't even taking advantage of the classes like I was only going to one personal training session a week when I could when I had access to the classes with my membership but it's like as you guys know and as I've told you before like I joined that gym at a time in my life where like I needed so many things that that gym and the people that I've met through that gym gave me like let me just I didn't plan on like going too far into this, but like, I think it's only right. I joined that gym after I was trigger warning, sexually assaulted and raped. And I needed to feel, I also went skydiving after that moment. So, or made the choice to go skydiving after I did that. So you, I guess that means a lot to me. Um, but I joined that gym. I needed to feel strong. I needed to feel confident. I needed to feel in charge. I needed to feel I needed to feel my body doing something worthy. I needed to be around other humans. Um, That was a time where I was like still podcasting at my kitchen counter and I was like kind of homebodying it. Like I just was going through a pretty depressive moment. And so that gym, it was such a fun gym. The first class I went to was like DJ. They had like Thursday night R&B night. So it was like a DJ there and the music and just like everyone was so nice and welcoming. And it was you could feel like the sense of community and the passion that the trainers, but even like the the gym goers um, had and just like the love that was there. So I just immediately, I mean, I signed up that day. Um, and then beyond that, like my trainer, Jared or JC is – the poor horse and podcast. He's also on the poor horse and podcast. And we've talked about him in that capacity as well. Um, 
But him and I just like got along, got close. I was introduced obviously to his wife, Kiana, who was the one who went skydiving with me. And the connections that I've made through them, because like just out of the goodness and kindness of their hearts and like just like no gatekeeping, just like, yeah, I see what you're doing. Like, oh, I saw this person you might be good to connect with. Oh, I saw this was happening. Like, I thought you might want to be invited there. Just like great fucking people um so that was this kind of like i think it served its time for me so i'm i'm fine about the the gym being canceled and now i'm a class pass girly um so far which i'm loving and i'm actually like i'm working some muscles that like my trainer was not working before like what are these obliques that they have me doing for 20 minutes on end at the solid core class i'm doing it's crazy um But anyway, so I kept my therapist, but my trainer's gone, 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 gone. Um, Still in contact with him, of course, especially because of the podcast and that I'm friends with his wife and um, again, more people that they've just connected me with. So those are kind of like the um, main topics of the things that I've been doing, like work, schmirk, been doing that. Um, sales is hard though. They don't always tell you that. Or maybe they did and I didn't listen because it's not easy. (laughs) Quarter one was a beast. And it's like, I got bills to pay, you know, lots of bills to pay. So besides that, what else, what else was I going to talk about? Um, oh yeah, it is... I'm doing the move your body challenge every day. It's going pretty well. So I'm filming this episode. I'm on day 43. I haven't missed a day. Now those have been, some of them have been stretching moments. Some of them have been like leg on fall wall. Like when you lay and put your feet above your heart. Um, Some of them have been walks. I've been trying to jog slash run Pilates, weightlifting while my gym was still open. It's not anymore. Um, so it's been a mix of things and it has just become part of my motherfucking routine. It's crazy. Like I will look ahead at my week and it's like, okay, I've got this and this and this after work. So I better get up early and do this, this, this before, like I'm going to get that workout in. Um, and it feels pretty good. It feels pretty natural. I can say that I haven't had a whole lot of like joint and hip pain or pain in my joints like regarding my hips in a couple weeks but I also haven't like tried to do like a full out run which is the thing that like the reason why I started this challenge was like oh my god I tried to go on a run and my hips were like fuck off so I I think it's time to try that and see but I'm gonna warm up to it I want to do like you know, maybe run two minutes one day, three minutes the next day, four minutes the next day, like gradually go into it and see if that helps. But yeah, I'm feeling good about that. Um, the other thing I'm doing, the other challenge I'm doing, which like, I guess I'm like big addicted to challenges right now. So anyone else got one for me? Like, what are you guys doing? Um, oh, and that's another thing too, is like, I'm posting every day on my personal social media, like that I'm doing it like day 40, day 41, day 42, day 43, move your body alert, da, da, da. And I was like, okay, I'm going to stop posting the days now. Like, I'm sure people are sick of this. And then it happened to me that that day I talked to a friend of mine and she's like, hey, I talked to two different people and they told me that they were inspired by your, your, your fitness posts, your daily movement posts. So don't stop posting. And I was like, ah, how cute is that? Okay, I won't. So that was kind of nice to hear. Happy to hear that it's, like, affecting people in a positive way. And I'm not just posting for no reason. Um, Oh, yeah. Okay. So the other challenge I'm doing is uh, why is this harder than working out every day? Like, never did I ever think that that would be the case. I'm, I started a posting every day on social media to prove to myself that I can. And obviously the goal of that is to, I think, one, get like my creative juices flowing Two, like, obviously a lot of those are going to be like outfit checks, fit checks related. So it like gets me wearing the clothes in my closet, first of all, but two, like not just putting on leggings and running out the door, um, like actually like getting dressed, feeling good about my outfit 
And again, like not everyone loves my fashion and that's totally fine. Like the more that you don't like my fashion, I probably feel more comfortable in my outfit that I chose. So, um, I'm dressing for myself, honey. Um, but the content, like with these content creators, they talk about like batch your content. Like they are not lying, girl. They are not lying. Like I need to spend like a weekend and just like outfit, 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 record, 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 edit, edit, edit. Because I think I have if you think about how much time it takes like it's not for the week it's a process and then i'm fully surrendering to the algorithm social media game it's like post longer videos they're telling you make sure to post on threads like i need more engagement like i'm getting all these i'm getting all this engagement but like no one's sticking around type of thing so you know it's like a science and here's the thing like I just told you some benefits to the posting on Instagram everyday challenge I'm doing but like let's be real the goal is to grow my following so the engagement matters the algorithm matters and it's for my personal and my podcast Instagram page so um I'm just another pawn in the game of social media frenzy but it's it's getting me to be more consistent because I would just treat my personal page like nothing. And it's like I have had people, look, you know, ask to reach out. And it's like, what, what am I going to show them on my personal page? Like I post once every four days, maybe once every couple weeks. So it's cool. I'm having fun doing it, like the actual content, like getting dressed. Like, oh, my God, I love this outfit. Let's go take a video. But then it's like looking at my post that's not getting any love like why am i doing this why am i doing this you know so that's a process can't believe that's harder than working out every day i just never thought i'd say that a day in my life dating has just been so absolute cringe what's the best word like I'm just speechless over it. Like, I just don't know what to say. I have no excuses for how some of these people act, talk, do, participate in this thing called life that we do. Um, It's really, like, I don't know if it's just, like, a rut. Like, here's the thing. I'm not even annoyed. I I, I know that I've talked to you guys a lot, whiners, about, like, oh, my God, I'm so annoyed. I don't want to date right now. Everyone sucks. It's kind of not even that. It's just, like, I'm confused. I'm confused. Are these all, like, paid actors that Hinge and Raya are putting on my page? Like, I'm, I'm one... I'm one tow truck impersonator. I'm one non-tipper. I'm one pen pal. And I'm one sandal dirty sock wearing guy away from just ending it all. Ending the dating game in its entirety. Like, I just can't be bothered with the stupidity, the craziness, the audacity. If you listen to last week's episode with Phil, I told the whole story about the guy who didn't tip on a $170 tab, didn't even know... I don't even think I went into details. Did I go into details about the fact that he tr- thought he was ordering a quesadilla but ordered fajitas? Like, uh, uh, he didn't, he was asking the busboy for drinks at the bar. It was just like somebody who didn't even know how to exist in this world. And I just like, what, what are we doing? Like when people, and then I'm talking to people, you know, and they're like, what are you looking for in a man? And I'm just like, all I want to do is list like, not this, not this, not this, not this. All the things that I've been on dates with. Like, anything but. So, if you can just, like, surpass that, we'll be good to go. Um, It's just really, it's it's quantity over quality at the moment. So, I'm taking a little bit of a step back. Like, I'm still on the, um, I'm still logged in. I wonder if I should just log off. Delete, delete, delete. Just, like, refresh. But then, you know, people are like, well, do you go out? I'm like, yeah, I do, to networking events. Like, I'm not going out to bars and, like, ins- ins- insing on a Friday night. I'm just not doing it. Like, to be honest with you, 
This weekend, I had two rot nights, which was too, too many. One too many. Rot nights, if you don't know what that is, it's just like slumming it at home, just like eating whatever you want, like kind of, I was kind of in like a melancholy mood, unexplainable too, I will say, and that had something to do with pushing, like recording the solo episode, I just could not get in the mind frame. Um, But yeah, I just like, what are we doing? I just think that I am going to meet somebody I think that one of you guys are going to set me up. That's what I think. So, like, stop playing around. Stop teasing me. Stop putting me through this game. And just, like, introduce my husband to me. Lovely, a leader, kind, knows how to function at a restaurant, knows how to make a reservation. He's a good communicator. Um, he's ideally taller than me because your girl is 5'10 barefoot, um, motivated, like, you don't gotta be some, like, crazy career person, but, like, motivated, makes enough money to, you know, survive, just, like, can take initiative, um, a sense of style would be good. I mean, that's a bonus at this point. Um, someone who understands like the entertainment industry, like the podcast world, respectful. Um, what else? Did I forget anything? A sense of humor. Someone who's like, likes to be in and outside. I'm talking about in the sun and like the streets. Um, someone who like, yeah, likes to be social, but can also just be at home. Someone who has good hygiene. Uh, someone who, oh, that's what we need. Someone who is like, um, I'm all for like helping someone figure themselves out, but at our age, like you've got to have a pretty good handle on it. Do you know what I mean? So like, if you're damaged, be getting the help to become undamaged. Like I'm doing it. I'm just looking for that in a partner as well. Like someone who's like recognizing or has recognized that there's some work they can do on themselves and are going to look into fixing that or becoming a better version of themselves. So I don't know. Is that too much to ask? Like, hello? Sometimes it really smells like skunk around my apartment. Like, it's just like one time a week, but like, I don't, I've never seen a skunk before here in Houston. I'm sure they exist, but it's like a very distinct smell. It's what I'm smelling right now. And it's just not pleasant. It's just not pleasant at all. So on the topic of dating, I, I wanted to like talk about the fact that I say I'm open to having kids because it's a topic that gets brought up pretty frequently. Um, and here's the thing. I, I've said it before on the podcast. I'll just remind you, like, I am open to having kids. I'm 34, though. I don't know that I want to be a 40-year-old first-time mom. That's first and foremost. And by the way things are going, like, six years does not seem that far away to, like... <laughs> The way that things are going, it's just like, it's treacherous out here, y'all. The streets, the sidewalk, the air, it's dangerous. These boys, woo, chee. Um, anyway, I digress. Um, I just, I, I don't know that I want to have a kid immediately with somebody. And by the time I meet that somebody, like, it seems pretty immediate. One. Two, if I'm, like, madly in love with that person, I've said before, you need to be, um, we need to be financially stable. Like, I don't, I grew up poor and I don't want to be poor with a kid. Number two, I want to be madly in love with my husband and like our relationship comes first. So how am I going to know that right away? Like that's going to take time to make sure that for the third reason why I won't say I want a kid or I want to make sure is that you are an active dad. And maybe this is like because of my trauma and my past, but I haven't had like too many good real good male role models in my day. I mean, didn't have a dad in my life. My grandpa was a like an amazing man. Like, never saw him. He was amazing, absolutely phenomenal. But like, like we like 
there was just no example of like love there like that I saw with him and my grandma um like he would just like you know she would cook the dinner and he would eat it and say thank you and my grandma would do the dish I don't know it's just like very old-fashioned it was a different time different age group but um you know I've had a couple others like my friends um husbands I've seen some I love part of part of their relationship and some I'm like oh I wouldn't want that in my relationship like same thing with my sister's relationships there's been things about their partners where I'm like Uh, wouldn't do that don't want to do that love that so also like it may seem the way I'm talking that I'm looking for some sort of perfection (laughs) and I am just kidding I'm not I'm not looking for perfection I'm looking for vulnerability openness and um oh the thing about the kids is like you gotta be you gotta want to be involved the kid if I'm having a kid with you like this is sure like Maybe at some points I'm going to be doing 80, 90, 100% of the work, but like you're pulling your weight on another, whatever that is. Like one of my biggest pet peeves is a man saying like something along the lines of like, oh, I can't go after babysit my kid tonight. It's like, I can't believe you just said those words. I can't believe you just said those words. You have to babysit your kid tonight. Though You get the privilege of being in the presence with your child tonight while your wife who pushed this baby out of her vagina goes to enjoy herself and her girlfriends or a spa day or whatever it is. So I just really think that there's like room for improvement, probably on both sides. Um, and I haven't heard too many, like n- really not a lot of like the close pe- close men that I know have said those words, but I just like, you know, you see on TV and stuff too. And it's like, no, I'm not down with that. Like I waited a long time to enjoy my life and to become like well myself. Like I didn't even start dating until how old? God, I don't even know. Um, didn't even care. I didn't even want like just men who were they like didn't even care at a certain point. And um, yeah, so these conversations have come up a lot in dating. I mean, they always have like, I've been on dates with somebody on a second date and they're like, are you, you know, do you want kids? How many kids do you want? And I say, I'm open to having kids. I'm open to the conversation. And it's like, whoa, if you were going to like, don't you think if you were going to be any sort of a good mom, you would like know that you like your answer would be like, I would love to like, God willing, I would love to have kids. No. And if you can't understand that, if you don't accept my answer, then like, we certainly don't have time to figure out if you can. Like, if you're in that big of a rush, you know what I mean? Like, go, 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 go. We should not go on another date. Now, I have been on dates with people on first dates, and I've been like, oh, my God, love this guy. I totally want to have his babies. <laughs> so there's, there's probably some, like, balancing that needs to get done. Yeah, probably some major balancing that it needs to get done there. I'll take that note down and talk to my therapist. Um, But anyway, I just think that there's this pressure on women to just, first of all, yeah, I want kids. Like, you just expect some a woman to be like, yeah, I want kids, can't wait. Like, why don't you have kids yet? Oh, because of X, Y, Z. It's like, because life be life in. And I can't find a suitable partner to be the father to my child. That's why. So what do you have to say about that? Anything? No. Can't hear you. Speak up. So I'm sticking with that story. That's what I feel. Um, I do feel that like even when there's been like a guy that I was like dating for a bit, I, I do get excited about the thought of having children with them because I love kids, by the way, if you missed that. I have four blood nieces and nephews. But I also have a few nieces and nephews that are not my blood. And I love kids. I'm so good with kids also, by the way. Like, I can put a baby to sleep like you wouldn't believe. Um, I love kids. But that doesn't always mean that it's, like, in your cards to have your own. And I just feel like there needs to be... I mean, I know a lot of people talk about this. Like, it just needs to be a little less expectations, criticism, um, judgment, those type of, those types of things placed on a woman. And just because someone says, I actually know somebody personally. I know somebody who has told me when I started dating my husband and now father of my child, I 
said a similar thing. I was not sure that I wanted kids. And that was very true. Um, and they wanted the man, you know, my husband now wanted kids more than me. And honestly, that's really worked out for us because he is so involved and so present and so helpful because he was kind of the one who wanted the kid more. And she's, by the way, like a lovely, beautiful, great mom and is obviously very active. Like they're both, but like, she's like, it really works out because it helped to balance that, that balance that can sometimes be off with the, the husband and the wife, like the husband's off doing whatever all the time. And it's like the mom doing all the work and it's not, it's, it's pretty equal, she says. And so she's like, honestly, the fact, like you sound like me. So I hope that you find, I hope you find someone who you do end up wanting to have kids with. And they're the one who was like, no, like we got to have a kid together. Like this is gonna, this is it. We got to, how can we not? Like, I love you so much. I'm going to be all these things and who pulls through. So I have faith that that could happen, but I'm not pressed about it because guess what? I would love to be for the rest of my life. The cool auntie who travels and brings good wine to family events all the time. Like I'm totally down with that with my hot ass husband who I'm madly in love with. If I can find one ever in this cesspool of psychopaths. I don't know what time I started. I don't know how long this episode has been, but. um, Oh, my wine of the week. Okay, I mentioned I had kind of like a melancholy weekend. Da, 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 da. Well, really, it started with my period the week before. My I had a rough... I don't... As I'm getting older, my cycles are just getting weirder and weirder. Um, I was so lethargic, so tired. I've had low energy. Even now that I'm off my period, I have low energy. And I'm not sure why. I don't know why. I cannot put the puzzle pieces together. But what I do know is I'm listening to my body. So, I'm, you know, I'm doing that fitness or that move your body every day challenge. Like, I'm listening to my body. If it's not a walk day or a workout day, then it's a stretch day. And that still counts as moving my body. And I'm not going to put pressure on myself to do something beyond that. But with also listening to my body, it's like also not getting mad at myself. So, like, I, in thinking of doing this solo episode and thinking of doing a couple other things, like I just kept saying, like, I can't get my mind right. Like, what is wrong with me? By the way, this is not my one of the week yet. I guess it could be. Yeah. My, okay. I have two. One one of the week is my mental warfare, like on my own psyche. Like I'm fine. Nothing's wrong. I feel happy and good, but like also blah. Like I, I just don't know how to explain it in a better way. But anyway, I had those two rot nights I mentioned. And so one night I ordered DoorDash. And can you guys believe this is my second wine? All I wanted was a barbecue chopped salad from Wood Ranch, which is the restaurant I used to work at in California. And obviously, I can't get that salad here in Texas. But I was like, the Cheesecake Factory barbecue salad does sound good. I'll get that. That salad is eighteen ninety five. What in the hell is going on in this world? Inflation is a motherfucker. $18.95? To be fair, I mean, I ordered it, obviously. That was three meals for me. Like, that salad came in. It was huge. So at least they're not charging me $18.95 for, like, a, you know, half-dinner pre-salad situation. That salad was big. And they remembered extra dressing because, you know, I'm a saucy girl. But anyway... Eighteen ninety five. That's what we're paying for a salad at a restaurant these days. That's my wine of the week. Fuck off. Like, how are people supposed to live? Okay, you're gonna say make your own salads, do your own grocery shopping. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're trying to keep restaurants in business too. You know what I mean? Like, I'm a giving person. That's what I have to say about that. So, I mean, I did it, and the salad was good. And the bread is good. And at this point, I think I might take a Cheesecake Factory date over the fuckers I've been dealing with. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. I don't know what to do with all those men. They need help. They need Jesus. They need help and they need Jesus. Okay, that's the episode. Thanks for whining with me. I'm trying to remember if I have anything else to say or 
Um, anything to announce? I don't think I'm ready to talk about some things that are in the works yet. Um, but that could be coming pretty soon. Some exciting things, maybe some new merch, maybe a fun in-person event. I don't know. Okay, gotta go. I want to watch Survival of the Thickest on Netflix because it is so fucking funny. That's another thing, too. When I had this melancholy weekend, I was watching, like, all these crime documentaries and crime drama movies. And, like, that's probably not helping. You know what I mean? So, like, now I'm onto a comedy and I love it. So I can't wait to go do that because this was a success. Thank you so much for whining with me. I love you. Thank you so much for your support. Um, Love talking to the camera to talk to you guys. Love interacting with you on social media. I really do. Like, I just feel so close to you guys. Oh my God, not me getting emotional. Okay, gotta go before that happens. Love you. See you next week. Bye. Can you imagine if I didn't record that whole episode? The mic set off.